All right, let's kick off our series on the different UI patterns, starting with a modal. The first thing to always think about is launching your Chrome extension. And then once you've launched, you can navigate to the page where you want to start building. Something interesting to think about when you're building modals and slide outs is that they're not tied to specific CSS selectors. So you can determine where you want these modals and slide outs to trigger. If you only want it to trigger on a specific page, I would recommend building it there. However, if you don't mind where it's going to be triggered or if you want it to trigger on multiple pages, you can pretty much build it anywhere. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to click create new content. I'm going to start here and now I'm going to create a flow. I'm going to move my face and name this. We'll just call it modal. I would recommend deciding pretty early if you're going to have a naming convention, but that's just my personal opinion. And let's go ahead and click create. Now, now we're adding individual UI patterns. We'll go through all of these in separate videos. So we're going to start with modals. Modals are great for making announcements, welcoming users because they really capture your attention. I'm going to pop this one over. Now here, you're going to choose the different templates that are already here. Some of these are built out um, automatically by user pilot, but you can also create your own templates and use these once you've actually built them out. So we're going to start with a default template and I'll show you how to modify it to make it your own. And then you can save it for future use. All right. Sorry. My face is all over the place. So the first thing that we're going to talk about are the settings here on the left-hand side, just a heads up. You can move this around. Should it be more comfortable on one side or the other? Um, and then we're going to move into the actual modal itself. So the first thing that we have here is your next button. This is your next button. And so normally when you add multiple steps, clicking this button will lead them to the next step, but you can also modify this as well and you can remove it altogether. So if you simply want to make an announcement and then require that they exit out of this specifically, that's fine too. You can also, even if your flow doesn't have additional steps, it's just ending here. Having this button is kind of a got it um, also works really nicely. The next thing that you have here is a time delay. This can be good if you don't want the user to have um, this appear in the moment that they log in. So, so you can give them a couple of seconds. This is also really nice for um, requests. If you're going to give a user um, a reminder of some sort, you can add this and it's in seconds. So those are two options that you have here in the individual settings. Now we can move into, oh, also you can change the size, of course. <laughs> now we're going to move into the group settings. Group settings allow you to change your theme if you hadn't initially decided on what theme you wanted to use when you were building it. So I can change it directly here. You can also add specific um, additions to the group as a whole. Right now, this is a standalone tool. I'll show you how to add to the group. And so then you can make modifications here. You can choose if you want this to be a skippable step. What does this mean? We're talking about this X button here at the top. If I turn this off, it removes my X button. In my personal opinion, removing the X button for situations like this is ideal because you want the user to actually interact with what you're asking them here. So this could be a welcome flow where you give them two options. Would you like to uh, go through the in-app walkthrough or would you like to explore on your own? And then giving them these two choices. If you have the X button as well, you're actually giving them a way out. But either way, you can remove this. You can and also leave it, but change the meaning of this X button here. So right now, the behavior of the X button is to exit the flow, but you can choose a variety of different options. You can make it skip this step and then continue on in this flow. So tons of options here. But for now, we'll leave it as um, the exit flow. Right now, as you can see, we have a backdrop. You can turn this off. You can also, when you do have it turned on, you have an option to modify the opacity of this. You can also change the color of it. So all of these are great options when thinking about your backdrop. Really what we've got here is something that really stands out to your users. Another piece of information that's important to know about modals is that as long as this modal is open, your users cannot interact with the rest of your page, even if the backdrop is off. So that's something to be mindful about. The next thing is your placement with modals. Like I said, they are centered. If you want something that's going to come in from the sides, that's a slide out, but you can change if you wanted um, more like tied closer to the top or centered directly in the middle of the screen. And the last thing that you have here is just some modifications to your box. This is uh, about rounded corners. If you want something a little bit more round or more pointy, totally up to you. And then also you do have your box border so you can add something to really make it pop. So now we've got all of the 
settings over here on the left side, let's actually look at the modal itself. The first thing that you've got is to know that you can rearrange absolutely anything on this modal. And it's as simple as dragging and dropping. So if I want to move this to here, it's now highlighted in that blue and I know I can move it directly to the middle. If I want to um, completely remove the title here, I just have to throw it in the trash can. All of these are completely customizable and you can add individual sections and columns both below and along the side. So what do I mean by this? Let's go ahead and add a heading. So I'm gonna put this header in here. I'll add my title, welcome. Now, I want to move it to the top, for example. Let's pop it right over here, great. But now, maybe I want to ask a little bit of information from my users. So let's go ahead and remove this section, and we're gonna add two columns. I'm gonna add first, let's do a radio button, which is just a survey, so I'm gonna ask a quick question. What is your role? We're going to go into actual survey information in another video as well, so be on the lookout for that, but I just want to show you how versatile this is. And then you've got your options, um, CS, sales, and let's do product. Great. So now we've got our options here, and now I want to add an additional text box, right? So I can use a large text input, for example, and now I've created two columns, and I can change this label to continue asking my question. If other, please explain, right? So we've got this great survey tool here. Like I said, we'll get into surveys um, and follow-up questions and things like that in another video. But as you can see, all of this is super customizable. Another thing that's important to know is your buttons. So this button text can be completely changed, like I said before. So this can be like, great, let's go, for example. Now, what's important to know about this button is what it does. The actions for buttons automatically, the standard default is go to next step, but you can, of course, modify this. You can trigger an, a flow from here which is always my recommendation with welcomes, instead of having the flow build out from here, is actually to build standalone flows. So you can trigger a flow, trigger custom JavaScript. You can do tons of different options here. So, you know, I really encourage you to explore all of these. So that's exactly what we're doing with this modal. Now, I mentioned that I was going to show you how to save this as a template. Perhaps you want to use this question um, and image as an example. So what you're going to be able to do is actually save this template and you'll name it um, survey. Okay, and so now when I create a new tool, which we're gonna do right now, we're gonna add another um, modal. If I click add and I wanna add another modal, what we'll find is in my saved templates, I have the survey, which is the option that I just made. So I don't have to go back through and recreate it over and over again, if that makes sense. So now we have a couple of things in mind. Remember, I've added a, uh, two modals or, and they're all they're both living independently. I can group them together so that their settings apply the same way. So if I make changes in the group settings, if you recall, we have this section called group. If I make changes here, they will always apply to the next modal if they are grouped together. But perhaps I don't want the settings to be the same so I can take them out of the group like this. Just drag it and drop it out of that group. So now they are two standalone tools. This is where you get that skip uh, step, but con or a dismiss group, but continue flow. Perhaps you have a series of modals, um, questions, and you want to allow your user to skip the questions, but continue the flow, things like that. So that's pretty much it. This is a modal kind of standard. If you have any additional questions, feel free to ask your customer success manager, but enjoy building out these modals. Check 